Hello guys, welcome back to Liftoff, your first place where you can find everything in space and often SpaceX. Coinciding with the new year 2022, Elon Musk has implicitly revealed that SpaceX recently conducted the first test of Starship's new Raptor 2 engine. Aside from kicking off integrated static fire testing of a refined, operationalized version of Raptor, the first prototype may have briefly become the most powerful engine of its kind ever tested before destroying itself. While it's not quite as successful as the first static fire campaign of a full-scale Raptor 1 engine, which survived several tests, the first Raptor 2 prototype's early demise is still a routine part of engine development and is the start of a process that should ultimately produce a super heavy booster with 50% more thrust than the next most powerful rocket ever flown. Prior to last weekend, it's likely that competitor Blue Origin's BE-4, still in development, and hope to one day power ULA's Vulcan and the company's own reusable New Glenn, was the most powerful methane oxygen rocket engine ever tested. BE-4 is designed to produce up to 244 tons, 539,000 pound force of thrust. On its very first static fire, it appears that SpaceX's first finished Raptor 2 prototype has narrowly stolen BE-4's crown, briefly generating main combustion chamber pressures of 321 bar, 4,650 psi, and as much as 245 tons, 540,000 pound force of thrust. To BE-4's credit, the engine, as per Blue Origin's sparse public communications, didn't destroy itself after its first full thrust static fire. Elon Musk said, each Raptor 1 engine above produces 185 metric tons of force. Raptor 2 just started production and will do 230 plus ton or over a half a million pound. There's also some ambiguity as Blue Origin's own website pages states, BE4 thrust at 2,400 kilonewtons, 550,000 pound force, when 2,400 kilonewtons is actually equivalent to 539,000 pound force. Regardless, Designed to produce up to 230 tons, 510,000 pound force of thrust in flight, Musk has said that Raptor 2 is a major improvement in simplification over Raptor 1, which normally produces up to 185 tons, 410,000 pound force of thrust at chamber pressures closer to 270 bar. It's not all that surprising then that the first Raptor 2 prototype ever completed exploded when SpaceX pushed it to almost 107% of its maximum rated thrust and main chamber pressure during its first test. Though impressive, SpaceX has technically pushed Raptor 1 prototypes further and without failure. Musk later indicated that there was some damage present, but a fairly young Raptor 1 engine still made it all the way up to 330 bar, 4,800 psi, and spent about 10 seconds at chamber pressures above 320 bar without failure during an August 2020 stress test. Still, had the Raptor 2 prototype also made it to 330 bar, it would have produced around 252 tons of thrust, 12% more than its Raptor 1 predecessor. According to Musk, the main differences between Raptor 1 and Raptor 2 are much cleaner plumbing and wire harnesses and a wider combustion chamber throat, which allows the engine to produce more thrust in roughly the same package at the cost of slight efficiency loss. Over the last two years, the CEO has mentioned the possibility of a power-optimized Raptor variant with up to 300 tons of thrust, but in recent months, Musk says SpaceX has decided to keep the Raptor family as streamlined as possible and opted for just two variants, one with a sea-level nozzle Raptor sensor and boost, and one with a larger vacuum-optimized nozzle. SpaceX is well into the process of qualifying Raptor for Starship's first orbital launch attempts. According to that timeline, 10 seconds shy of 3 minutes after liftoff, Starship's super heavy booster will shut down and separate from the spacecraft. Starship will then ignite either 3 or 6 Raptor engines for a bit less than 6 minutes to boost itself within the vicinity of orbital velocity. Curiously, the same timeline makes no mention of a deorbit burn, without which the first orbital test flight will technically be suborbital, even if Starship is traveling very close to orbital velocity. Regardless, the document confirms that Starship's orbital insertion burns will be approximately 5.5 to 6.5 minutes long, the maximum stamina required for its Raptor engines, in other words. Rephrased, in its current design, Starship will never be able to reach orbit without Raptor engines capable of continually operating for around 6 minutes. Up until high-altitude Starship test flights began in December 2020, 
The extent of Raptor's long duration capabilities and thus the state of SpaceX testing was effectively a mystery. Ultimately, as Musk notes, if SpaceX manages to boost Raptor 2 to 230 tons of thrust, a super heavy booster with 33 mostly identical engines would have a peak liftoff thrust of around 7,600 tons, translating to a thrust to weight ratio of more than 1.5. For a large rocket with liquid propulsion only, a thrust to weight ratio is very respectable and improves acceleration off the launch pad, reduces gravity losses in the first few minutes of ascent, and thus boosts overall efficiency. Already, Musk's implication that 33 engines could ultimately be installed on Super Heavy is a departure from comments the CEO made barely a month ago when he revealed a base increase from 28 to 29 engines, with the possibility of expanding to 32 down the road. Also new is the implication that SpaceX is considering adding three more vacuum-optimized engines to Starship's six planned Raptors, leaving ships with six Raptor vacuum engines and three sea-level optimized engines. Musk says that SpaceX has yet to decide if Raptor Vacuum will be commonized with Raptor 2, boosting its thrust, or if greater efficiency will be pursued instead. Regardless, even with six 200-ton thrust RVACs and three Raptor 2s, Starship would produce upwards of 2,000 tons of thrust and vacuum, creating an upper stage with almost as much thrust as Falcon Heavy and a fully fueled thrust to weight ratio of 1.7, even better than Super Heavy. However, Elon Musk has recently announced that a new production plant will be built near the McGregor engine testing facility. This plant will specifically produce Raptor 2 engines optimized for firing at sea level, most of which will be used on Super Heavy boosters. The Raptor 2 is a future version of the engine soon to enter testing, and the factory will be capable of making two to four of these engines per day. SpaceX and Blue Origin have been competing with each other for many spacecrafts and commercial contracts. Both companies are developing their next generation rocket, but SpaceX is the leading space company that has made many rocket engines since its launch in 2002. A few months ago, SpaceX completed its 100th Raptor engine. This extraordinary milestone was achieved in just 29 months. This production rate is higher than a typical rocket factory, but low compared to an automobile factory. As Elon stated in a tweet, it the factory, will be the highest output and most advanced rocket engine factory in the world. He believes it will be needed to support high-cadence, super-heavy operations, including many flights to Mars related to the build-out of the planned Martian city. Testing activities will also support future Starship missions such as Starling 2.0 flights and Yusaku Mazawa's Dear Moon crewed lunar mission. The two demonstration HLS missions to the moon on lunar Starship and Starship missions to build out Elon Musk's planned city on Mars, which could be home to up to a million people by 2050. And that's all the information we have for you in today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to be the first who gets the latest information on space and SpaceX, subscribe to Liftoff and hit the notification feature. Thank you so much for your support, and I hope to see you next time.